The definition of cirrhosis can be divided on several specific characteristics. First of all, cirrhosis is end-stage liver damage. An example, let's take pathogenesis of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. At start there is normal liver, and then with development of insulin resistance, fatty liver develops with excessive accumulation of fat, but there is little or no inflammation. And then at some critical point of fat accumulation, oxidative injury develops. And with oxidative injury, there are areas of inflammation in liver tissue, and inflammation usually accompanied by fibrosis, in this condition called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And if inflammation with fibrosis persists, through years, this eventually results in cirrhosis development. So cirrhosis is the final stage and the most severe stage at this sequence of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis pathogenesis steps. The second characteristic is that for cirrhosis development, the injury must be persistent. Because once injury is interrupted, for example with cessation of alcohol consumption, the reversion of fibrosis may happen. Morphologically, cirrhosis is characterized by diffuse transformation of the entire liver parenchyma into regenerative parenchymal nodules that are surrounded by fibrous bands. Diffuse transformation means that fibrotic processes spread over entire liver and not localized at some distant region. Regenerative parenchymal nodules add survived hepatocytes, and these hepatocytes are regenerating by mitotic replication. And fibrous bands is the scar tissue that is produced to limit inflammatory damage by encircling hepatocytes from inflammation in liver tissue. In this picture we can see liver fibrous bands that encircle hepatocytes and this results in formation of regenerative parenchymal nodule. And vascular shunting occurs as a result of increased pressure in some vascular region. Shunting can be intra- and extrahepatic, for example in normal condition blood from portal vein moves to liver sinusoids and then to hepatic vein. But if intrasinusoid thrombosis occurs, intrahepatic pressure increases, and blood tends to move by the lowest resistant pathway, thereby bypassing highly resistant sinusoids, blood serves the possibility to move directly from portal vein to hepatic vein, where resistance is much lower, and it became possible with formation of intrahepatic portosystemic venous shunt. So what is the function of fibrogenesis in liver disease? First of all, scar formation is a natural wound healing response to a tissue injury. It occurs in almost all tissues after exposure to almost any destructive stimulus that cause a disruption of tissue unity. For example, myocardial infarction, gunshot wounds, burns and many other conditions, all these conditions repair by formation of scar tissue. The goal of fibrogenesis in liver disease is to limit the damage by encircling hepatocytes from areas with high inflammation, thereby saving them, and to prevent tissue collapse, because when hepatocytes die, something needs to fill up this empty space, so scar tissue is working like biological glue to keep tissue unity. Fibrosis is a dynamic process. This means that with chronic injury, there will be always areas of fibrotic progression as well as fibrotic regression. Everything depends on disease activity. For example, in alcoholic hepatitis, if patients continue to consume alcohol, this will cause persistent injury with inflammation in liver parenchyma. And inflammation is accompanied by fibrosis, so fibrotic progression prevails. But with cessation of alcohol consumption, the chronic injury is interrupted, and without inflammatory processes, fibrotic regression prevails. The principal cells that are responsible for scar tissue production are hepatic stellate cells. To understand what happens in cirrhosis, there is a scheme of liver sinusoid functional unit. There are two hepatocytes. Between their apical membrane there is bioconoliculus. On their basement membrane there are hepatic microvilli. Hepatic stellate cells located on hepatic basement membrane in extracellular matrix space, also called space of DISA. The endothelial cells separate extracellular matrix from blood vessels that is called sinusoid to endothelial cells that here Kupfer cell. So there are three major functional cells, endothelial cells, Kupfer cells and hepatic stellate cells. The most specific feature of liver endothelial cells in normal condition is their fenestration. Fenestration means that they have pores through which nutrients from sinusoid can pass to extracellular matrix and then to hepatocyte. Also they are the major regulators of hepatic stellate cells activity by production of major fibrogenic cytokine transforming growth factor beta-1. 
Kupfer cell cell liver macrophages, they are antigen presenting cells, means that they take up antigen and present this antigen to lymphocytes for a further immune response. Also, Kupfer cells produce cytokines and chemokines that regulate immune processes in liver tissue, particularly inflammation. Hepatic star cells are the key cells in fibrogenesis. In normal condition, it's a major vitamin A storing cells that store approximately 40 to 70% of total retinal content in the body. But their most important function is the production of connective tissue matrix in extracellular space. Also, they promote the release of growth factors as hepatocyte growth factor, which is the most potent mitogenic factor for hepatocytes. The mechanism is that hepatic star cells produce extracellular matrix. And when metalloproteinases degrade extracellular matrix, the fragments of extracellular matrix released, and some of these fragments have certain biological activity, for example, hepatocyte growth factor. So, hepatic star cells produce connective tissue matrix that is composed of three components, glycoproteins, proteoglycans, and the collagen type 4, which is the most important characteristic of normal connective tissue matrix. Collagen type 4 is non fibril forming type of collagen. It means that each collagen type 4 molecule is linked to each other by head-to-head -head connection. This results in very thin and soft structure. That's why collagen type 4 is essential component of basement membranes through the body and also is essential component of extracellular matrix because this structure provides good diffusion rate for nutrients on their way from sinusoid to hepatocyte. And as we already discussed, connective tissue matrix serves as deposition of growth factors. A few words about matrix metalloproteinases. It's a collective name for calcium-dependent zinc-containing endopeptidases. The most well-known are collagenase that degrade collagen molecule and gelatinase that degrade gelatin which is irreversibly hydrolyzed collagen. This name was given to them to emphasize their dependence on metal ions for their activity because calcium and zinc are cofactors of these enzymes. And the important feature is that their activity is regulated by tissue inhibitors of matrix metalloproteinases. Basically, the function of metalloproteinases is that they degrade connective tissue. That's why they are so important in reversion of cirrhosis processes.